Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. Watching for chicken hawks? Nope. I'm watching for that Hollywood movie actor Dash Riprock. He's coming to see Ellie May. Well, uh, you're gonna make him feel about as welcome as a pole cat at a picnic. Oh, it ain't loaded. But the sight of one of these has helped many a boy declare his intentions. <laughs> Dash and Ellie have had two dates. That's what I mean. It's high time he declared his intentions. I don't believe in these long, drawn-out courtships. Ain't this the kind of thing that scared off Dash when he was dating Ellie before? Well, somebody's got to look after your daughter. Granny, this is a city. The cold of the hills don't hold... Yonder he comes. Let's get out of sight. <laughs> I mean, clean out of sight. <laughs> Ellie? Dash Riprocks are coming. Jed, you take my advice. Make that Hollywood slicker declare his intentions before it's too late. <laughs> She's toting her suitcase. Maybe they's gonna run off. Now, Granny. <laughs> Ellie, uh, what are you and Dash fixing to do today? Well, he said we was going to the beach and dig for clients. You gonna swallow that story? <laughs> Hi, Ellie. Hi, Dash. Hi there, Granny. Mr. Clampett. Howdy, Dash. What are you and Ellie gonna do today, Dash? <laughs> We're gonna dig clams. Fine and dandy. All right, now, young fella, let's have the truth. We're going to Pismo. You see, Jed, I told you that clam digging was just a story. They is going Pismoing. <laughs> well, if I hadn't drawn down on him, he'd have got away with it. How do you Pismo? Pismo's where we dig for clams. Pismo Beach. Granny, just joking. Have fun now, youngins. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Granny. Bye, Bye. Bye Granny. Now, ain't you plum ashamed? No, I ain't. He's a Hollywood actor. And I wouldn't trust none of them any further than I could fling an anvil. <laughs> How soon you have to get back to the studio, Dash? Well, I got the whole day off, Ellie. They're shooting my scenes with a stunt double today. Well, what's a stunt double? Well, he's a fellow that takes my place in the dangerous scenes. For example, today he's in a covered wagon full of dynamite when it explodes. Then he gets swept down the mountain in an avalanche. And if he's still in one piece, We've got a scene where he rushes into a burning cabin to rescue the girl, and it collapses. Well, golly, who would be dumb enough to do that? I don't know. They found some nut. <laughs> <laughs> Over at the movie studio, they say I'm gonna be twice the star Dash Riprock is. They say I'm gonna be his double. You're gonna be acting in pictures like Dash? Instead of Dash, just between us, I think they's trying to get rid of him, because they's given me all his good scenes to do today. They are? Yep. I get to ride in a covered wagon. Fella said that scene is just dynamite. <laughs> and then I get to ride on an avalanche, whatever that is. <laughs> then I get to rescue a pretty girl from a burning cabin. <laughs> How come they picked you to do all that? Uncle Jed? It was like a Hollywood fairy tale. Well, I was just standing there on the set, and this big light fell down and hit me right on the head. Get hurt? 
I'll say, busted it all to pieces. <laughs> Offered to pay for it, but... Did you get here? Oh, heck no. <laughs> then a crowd gathered around, and this man said, Hey, you're just the fella to take Dash's place. Reckon he's seen I had what you call star quality. <laughs> Does uh, Dash know about this? Oh, I don't think so. They gave him the day off. Well, I don't exactly cotton to you taking Dash's job. Oh, I don't need it. But that's show business. The day star is tomorrow's has been. Same thing could happen to me now that I'm a star. What's going to happen to Dash? Oh, don't worry, Granny. I'll see he gets took care of. I'll make him uh, my grip or my hairdresser or something. Yeah, make us proud of you, Jethro. Oh, by the way, that ain't my name no more. Us movie stars got to use tough-sounding names like uh, Biff Steele, Crunch Hardtack, or Race Burley. You got one? I thought myself up a dandy. Beef jerky. <laughs> That's tough, all right, but I kind of have the feeling he could have done better. <laughs> Whatever he'd have thought of, it had been food. <laughs> Yes. A movie star to see me. Now, look, I told Dash Riprock to date Ellie at... Beef Jerky. <laughs> Surprise, Mr. Drysdale. It's me. Jethro. <laughs> Your... Beef Jerky. <laughs> Make the name of myself. You like it? I couldn't have done better. <laughs> Jethro, uh, I mean, Beef wants to borrow my car so he can arrive at the studio in style. You mean you're serious about this? Heck yeah! I'm gonna be the new Dash Rip Rock. <laughs> Wonderful. I'll get my keys. Uh, Dash is still dating Ellie, isn't he? Oh, yeah. They's on their way to Pismo Beach right now. Good, good. <laughs> Boy, Mr. Drysdale, I sure hope them pretty girls chase after me like they done old Dash. They will. Don't you worry, Beef. Oh, incidentally, I'd use that first name whenever possible. You don't want people calling you <laughs> Mr. Jerky. <laughs> yeah. I see what you mean. I don't want nobody to think I'll go in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here are my keys, Jethro. Oh, beef. Thanks. I'll leave the truck in the parking lot for you. Oh, that will be necessary. Oh, yes, it will. I can only drive one car at a time. <laughs> well, where do you suppose he got that wild idea? Same place he got the clothes. <laughs> but who cares as long as Ellie Mae is happy? Jethro says Dash took her to Pismo Beach today. Well, that's very interesting. Oh, speaking of Dash, Mr. Drysdale, this is Miss Debbie Haber. She'd like to talk to you about him. Well, what can I do for you? You've just done it. You've told me where I can find the two-timer. No, no, wait a minute. Don't, don't get in my way. Dash told me you started this Ellie Mae business. Well, I'm going to finish it. Now, wait, Miss Haber. How would you like to meet the new Dash Rip Rock? Who? Well, that big, good-looking movie star who just left here. You mean Tiger Boy, the clown in the bi-flavor outfit? Let me tell you about him. No, thanks. Dash promised me a screen test, and he's going to come through. This kid's uncle owns the studio. Really? Well, tell me more about him. Well, he's a nice kid, lots of laughs. Not him. His uncle. <laughs> Dash isn't working today, Miss Haber. Who cares? I'm looking for beef jerky. Well, you're in luck. Some guy just brought in a load. Hello. <laughs> uh, howdy. Oh, uh, I ain't Dash Riprock. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, you're much handsomer than Dash. <laughs> oh, shucks. That fire G whiz. <laughs> oh, and a bit of conversationalist, too. <laughs> Talk some more. I just love to hear you. Golly, well, Chris Darnation. Oh. <laughs> you act in the movies? Oh, I want to. Oh, would you like to watch me today and learn how? May I? Well, heck yeah. I'm going to do some real great scenes. <laughs> oh, yonder comes my director. <laughs> 
He's the one that discovered me. Well, I'm going to go park my car, and I'll meet you right back here. OK. Hot dog. Been a star less than an hour and already got me a girl. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gordon, it's me. Huh? Oh, you're the, uh, you're the guy that got uh, hit with the lamp yesterday. You're, uh, you're, um, uh, B uh, Bodine, aren't you? I'm jerky now. Worse than yesterday? <laughs> Bodine, go on over to wardrobe, will you? Hey, I'd appreciate it if you called me by my screen name. Beef Jerky. Beef Jerky. Tough sounding, ain't it? Yeah, sounds, sounds great. Now, you're, you're gonna double dash Rip Rock, right? Well, I'm gonna do my best. Yeah, all right. Well, now, we're gonna be on location, so I'll meet you over at the bus, but first, the studio doctor will examine you, then you'll have to sign those release forms, right? Then I want you to drop in over there on wardrobe and pick up your crash helmet, your chest protector, your safety padding, and your asbestos underwear. <laughs> Boy, they really take care of you when you're a star. Well, I'm all ready. Well, I don't know if you're going to be able to watch me act today. We're going out on what you call location. Well, I'll be waiting for you when you get back. Beef. How'd you know my name? Oh, I know a lot about you. Word's getting around. It is? <laughs> yes. And I'd like to know you better. Meet your family? Well, all right, but don't expect too much. They's just a bunch of weed benders from back in the hills. They ain't sophisticated like me. Well, I can't wait to meet him. Him? Uh, them. Oh. Well, uh, bye. 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 <laughs> Where you been, Granny? Out burying them biscuits Ellie baked. Out under the elm tree, I hope. It's pretty near dead of cupcake poison. <laughs> I found another spot. But, Jig, you have got to get that dash rip rock to propose to that girl before he finds out what terrible thing she does in the name of cooking. I know what you mean. If he ever eats her vittles, we'll never get him to the church. Oh, he'll get to the church, all right. But six of his friends will be toting him in a box. <laughs> Granny, it ain't that bad. It's so bad, Jethro won't eat it. You can't get worse than that. Say, uh, speaking of Jethro, he called while you was outside. Said he's found himself a sweetheart. A sweetheart? Yeah, said she's real pretty and right sweet on him. Said it was a case of love at first sight. He's going to bring her home to meet us and then ask her to marry him. Oh, my goodness. Well, what's your name? He don't know that yet. Oh. Well, at least ways he's moving faster than Dash Rip Rock. Yeah, his movie star and is moving right along, too. He says he's out on what they call uh, location, getting ready to act in his first scene. Oh, I wish we could see him. Okay, now, Beef, you're going to play the toughest, most indestructible marshal in the West, Six Gun Tex. But I only got one gun. Uh, sorry, don't worry about that. Now, look, in this scene, what you've got to do is prevent the Indians from getting the covered wagon full of dynamite. Hey, that's great. Hey, how do I do it? Never mind. I'll tell you when the time comes. Now, Bob, are you ready to pan him over to the wagon? All set, Mr. Gordon. All right, I want, uh, I want uh, Joe and Harry to cover the same action on cameras two and three. Now, Beef, Beef, listen. When I say action, when I say action, I want you to run to the covered wagon, climb in the back of the covered wagon. Yes, sir. <laughs> OK. Action! <laughs> Were you able to follow him, Bob? Not missing a thing. All right. He's in the wagon. Cue in my Indians. OK, Beef, the, the Indians are coming. How do I keep him from getting the dynamite? Just push down on that little red plunger. Beef, maybe. <laughs> Sure sets a feller's ear stringing. <laughs> no Indians! What happened to my Indians? They missed their cue, Mr. Gordon. Oh. All right, we'll do it again. Get another wagon. <laughs> OK, beef! Here come the Indians! Push the plunger! Again? Yes, again! <laughs> How did it go? 
that time. Beautiful. Great. Bob. Bob, how'd it look to you? I missed it. The film buckled. Uh -huh. Well, don't worry. Joe and Harry were covering on the other two cameras. <clears throat> Joe. Joe, how'd it go with you? Sorry, Mr. Gordon. I had a foul failure and didn't get a thing. Well, we've still got the long shot up in the hill. Harry. Harry, come in, Harry. How'd it go up there, Harry? Ready when you are, Mr. Gordon. <laughs> Get another wag. We're gonna do it again. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Clement. Hi, Pa. Hey, how you there? How'd you young folks do down to the beach? Well, just fine, Pa. We had us a massive fun. Good, good. Manage your phone, Mr. Clement? You bet you can. It's right inside there. Help yourself. Thanks. I want to call the studio and see how things are going. But, uh, well, I reckon he's got to find out for itself sooner or later. Well, find out what, Pa? His job, movie star, and has done been took by your cousin Jethro. Jethro! I know it's a mite hard to swallow, but right now, whilst we are standing here, Jethro is out someplace on what they call location, doing all the Dash's best scenes. I just talked to the studio. Do you know what Jethro's doing? Well, yeah, Dash, but... I gotta stop it. Well, now, uh, let's talk a minute. Well, there's no time for that. Jethro's doing all my stunts. Well, I know he's trying. He's gonna get his head blown off. <laughs> My doggies, he took it right spiteful. Gee, Paul. He had an order threatened Jethro. Just for that, I hope the boy gets a chance to show him what he's made of. What do I do now, Mr. Gordon? On action, you come flying out of the cabin and head right for the camera. OK. All right. Action! <laughs> Look, Bob. Great. All right, print it. Now let's get set up for the avalanche. <coughs> Mr. Gordon? What, what, what is it, kid? Are you sure Cary Grant started like this? <laughs> I want to have something good for him. Say, them's pretty nice looking loaves of bread. Well, these is cookies. Cookies? <laughs> yes, ma'am. The last ones I baked you said wasn't high enough. So I made these extra thick. <laughs> yeah. That's a thick cookie, all right. Well, don't let Jethro see him. Well, he'll just shovel him in. Not unless he digs the hole in somebody else's yard. <laughs> but you know to work up appetite. I'll work him up appetite when I get my hands on him. Why, well, he went and took Dash's job. Hi, Uncle Jed. What? <laughs> You look like you've been sorting bobcats in a burning halo. I feel like it, too. Granny! Well, I know Dash was gunning for you when he left here, but I never thought he'd do this to you. Well, he didn't. I got this acting. Acting? Yeah, and Uncle Jed, being a movie star ain't all that it's cracked up to be. And, and you... What happened to him? He's been acting. Yeah. And let me tell you, Granny, it is miserable work. Well, the hour is as good. You got done early. I wasn't done, but old Dash come out and kicked up such a fuss, they sent me back to the studio. Well, from the look of you, maybe it's just as well. <laughs> but I was just getting to the good scene. I was going to ride an avalanche down a mountain. What's avalanche? How do you ride it? Well, I don't know, but it had to be what I've been doing. <laughs> Where's that girl you called about? Oh, yeah, Debbie. Meeting her is the best part of this movie star in business. I thought you was going to fetch her home. Oh, she's coming by later. Said she had to go get fixed up first. Wait till you see her. She's pretty as a mess of fried catfish. <laughs> Granny? Boy's in love. Ain't no girl ever come up to fried catfish before. Now all we gotta do is find Dash. And if I hadn't gotten there when I did, he'd have been buried under an avalanche. Good heavens! All right, so you did a good deed. Go collect your merit badge and get back up to the Clampets. That's another thing. I, I can't go on seeing Ellie. 
Oh, why not? Well, those people three dates and you're engaged. Well, you could do worse. Her father has 50 million. Uh, Mr. Drysdale, money isn't everything. There, there, out. <laughs> now, you don't fool me, Rip Rock. You just want to get back to those Hollywood swingers like Debbie Haber. What do you know about her? Plenty. If I hadn't sicked her onto Jethro, she'd have gone out to Pismo Beach you and... You sicked I... Debbie on Jethro? Well, yes, because if I hadn't done Mr. that... Mr. Drysdale, I... she'll break that kid's heart. All she cares about is a screen test. And if she ever gets her gold-digging hooks into Jed Clampett... Whoa, don't stand there! Do something! <laughs> Fine, break it up! Right. <laughs> well, Miss Hathaway, I have you to blame for this mess. Well, I didn't do anything. I know, I did. But fortunately, I have you to blame for it. <laughs> Can I help you? I hardly think so. Well, who are you looking for? I'm uh, looking for Mr. J.D. Clampett. Well, then I can help you. That's me. You? <laughs> I mean, you? Yeah, ma'am. Well, give me, but the, the way you dress would... You just don't look like the average run-of-the-mill studio executive. <laughs> well, thank you, ma'am. I always prided myself on dressing neat. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Clampett, I'm, I'm Debbie Haber. Oh, yeah. You're that girl that Jethro was so took with. Oh, he spoke to you about me. Yes, ma'am. He said you was about as pretty as a mess of fried catfish. <laughs> oh, my beef jerky. You took Dash's job and now you're gonna get it. Guess what? Beat up. Oh, Ellie, I done been beat up, blowed up, and burned up. Count three, and then I'm gonna commence to taking you apart. Now, come on, Ellie, please. One. Listen. My sweetie's coming. Two. I have a heart. Three. Two. Sounds like Jethro. He must be changed by now. Come on in. No, Mr. Clampett, it's you I want to talk to. Me? Yes. What for? I want you to test me. <laughs> Why would I want to do that? Because I've had a lot of experience. Let me tell you what I've done. Well, uh, what's past is past. Uh, that's your business, ma'am. The only thing that counts is what you are today. Well, all right, then. Take a look at me. I'm 36, 24, 35. Now, calm down. You got yourself to where you can't even remember your own age. <laughs> all right, all right, I promise. No more movie star and Dash can have it. Okay, now tell Pa. And then you're gonna find Dash and tell him. Mr. Clampett, don't you understand? I want to be in the movies. I want to be a star. You better talk this over with Jethro. That is beef. According to him, it's miserable work. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm trying to get a screen test. Well, meet me at the studio. I'll take care of it. Hey, Dash, I don't want to be a movie star no more. You can have your old job back. Thanks. Hey, wait, Debbie. You and me can still be sweethearts. Get lost, jerky. Oh, it's Bodine now. To me, you'll always be jerky. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Ellie. I'll bite you some cookies. I'll run fat you. Get in this car and drive for your life, boy. Dad! Ellie's been baking again. You got a sharp shovel? Get going, boy. Really hasn't got a shotgun. She's got worse. Go! <laughs> Thanks, Miss Jane. Yours is over yonder. Let's go for a little drive, uh, Beef. <laughs> okay, but uh, I'm just playing Jethro from now on. Oh, uh, where, where should we go? Randy, that gives me an idea. Say, uh, how would you two like to drive to Pismo Beach? For climb digging? No, for cookie bearing. <laughs> That's the one place they won't kill the trees. <laughs> Now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. 
And they would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.